Hi, Alan Stratton here from costmatters.com. Some years ago, as a young cost accountant, I was sitting in a meeting when the Vice President of Sales came in and announced that we needed to establish a multi-million dollar reserve and exit one of our major product lines. Of course, this came as quite a shock. At the time, I remember asking him about raising prices. His response, no, our customers will not accept higher prices. Therefore, we have to leave the business. Now, I still think we should have tried to raise prices. What did we have to lose? If we were willing to take a large hit to our bottom line to exit the business, why not raise prices to where we could make a profit? Then one of two things could happen. On one side, the higher price could stick and we would make money. We could definitely live with this result. On the other side, customers could reject the price and not buy from us. Now, we were already ready to accept this result anyway, so why not try? Maybe, just maybe, our competition was suffering just as much as we were and about to make a similar decision. Since that time, so many years ago, I continue to remember that conversation. I continue to want to have the market help make that decision. However, now with more experience and more insight, I would add a few more considerations. First, from the environment of my business and a business management perspective, there are at least two important backdrops. One backdrop is my business strategy. A business strategy needs to include a customer perspective and a product perspective. Without going more into strategy, without a strategy, you are without direction. The second backdrop is my costing methodology. Early in my career, I was naive. I assumed that our costs were accurate. Since then, I've seen far too many examples where costs were simply wrong. Seems to be quite common. Consequently, decisions based on these costs were also simply wrong. In a free and open market, the market sets the price. However, your profitability determines whether you want to play in this particular market or go elsewhere. With the environment set, from an investigative perspective, there are five areas to explore. Now, these cannot be explored in isolation. They can and do influence each other. First, look at volume. What can be done to drive more volume in this product? Can the product be sold to a different market segment? Can the product be repurposed to serve a different customer need? Interesting questions. Second, can we reprice it like I wanted to do? Can the price be higher? Maybe customers are really happy that the price is so low, but would actually accept a higher price. How much would demand change if prices were lower? Here, be sure to check back to your business strategy. Third, re-examine your processes. Often, businesses look only to their production processes for improvement opportunities. Now, more in businesses are also examining their processes for customer service, for sales, and for marketing. Wherever there is waste or inefficiency, there is a profit leak. While examining processes, I would also include checking both product specifications and prices that are being paid for the inputs. Some would make this a separate perspective, but I think it's more rewarding when specifications and prices are considered within the process perspective. Fourth, look at capacity. When too much capacity is dedicated to one product, you may experience what is called the death spiral. What's a death spiral? First, a death spiral is dangerous to your business health or profitability. A death spiral occurs when excess capacity cost is allocated to a product. Now, from accounting perspective, this drives the cost higher. And upon seeing higher costs, management raises prices. Seeing higher prices, customers reduce the volume of their purchases. Now, with less production but the same capacity cost, product cost goes even higher. And reacting to higher cost, management again raises prices. 
and so it goes, spiraling down to bankruptcy. Fifth, look for a bailout. Based on recent government activities, one could look for a government bailout or a government subsidy. But be careful here. If we go back to my vice president of sales that I started with, our product then was an electromechanical television tuner. Perhaps you have seen one in a museum. If we had received a government bailout, all of us would be watching television now with very few channels and very low reliability. On the reliability issue, one of my early childhood memories was of holding a broom handle on the television tuner knob in just such a way as to have a good picture. Now, rarely in our businesses is there one simple answer to business problems. Let's keep our eyes, our ears, and our minds open to new perspectives and new solutions. Please remember the cost does matter. Now, I would appreciate your insights as to what considerations you would make. To your business profitability, I'm Alan Stratton from CostMatters.com. Thank you.